In this video, we'll be learning how to solve logarithmic equations. So there are a couple of different strategies that we can use in order to solve logarithmic equations. The first involves the property of equality. So what this property states is that if b is a positive real number other than 1, then log base b of x equaling log base b of y only happens if x is equal to y, which, if we think about it, should make sense. Essentially what this is saying is that if you have log base b on both sides, so they have the same log base, and you have something inside of the log. So you have the same log base on each side, and then you have, say, let's put x on this side and 4 on this side. So what this is essentially saying is that if you have log base b, which b can be any real number other than 1, if this happens and you have the same log on both sides and you have nothing else, then what's inside of these logs needs to be the same. And if you think about it, that should make sense. x has to be equal to 4 because their equations and the two sides need to look the same if we have an equal sign here and basically everything is the same besides the x and the 4. So essentially what you can do is if you have the same log base on each side, you don't have anything on either side of them, is you can just set the insides of these logarithms equal to each other because they need to be the same based on the property of equality for logarithmic equations. So let's take a look at two examples here. First, in example one, I noticed that I have log base 5 and log base 5 as the dominant functions on both sides of the equation. And then they have expressions inside of them. Because these logs have the exact same base and they have nothing else outside of them, I can set their insides equal to each other. And then from here, I can solve. So here, we're going to get the x's on the same sides. So I'm going to subtract 4x from each side. I'm going to add the 8 over to each side. So I have 3 is equal to 3 x divide by 3 and I find that x is equal to 1. Then from here if I look at example 2 remember natural logs are simply base e so this same property applies so if we have natural log base e on the left as the dominant function and on the right and there's nothing else around it what we can do here is again we can set these insides equal because we have a log with the same base and the insides need to be the same in order for this equation to be true. So again, we go through that same process. Subtract 4x from each side. I'm going to add the 8 over. So I have 3x is equal to 2 divided by 3, and x is equal to 2 thirds. So that property of equality simply allows us to set the insides of logs equal if their bases happen to be the same and they are set equal to each other. Now the property of equality for logarithms is great, but it only really applies when we have logarithms with the same base dominating both sides. So it's like you have a logarithm around the left hand side and a logarithm around the right hand side. And that is not always the case. Now here you can see this problem contains one logarithm and we have to solve this one logarithm. So we have one of two options for solving this logarithm and I'm going to show you both. The first is we're going to use that strategy that allowed us to rewrite logarithms into exponents. So here we know that we can write a logarithm into an exponent by taking 4 to the power of 3 is equal to 6x minus 23. Remember we take 4 to this power and then this is what we're set equal to. So from here this would become 64 equals 6x minus 23. We would then add 23 to each side, so that would become 87. And then we would divide by 6, so we would end up with x equals 87 over 6. So that's one option that we can use. The other thing that we can do is we can actually use our knowledge of logarithms and exponents being inverses to our advantage. So we know that a logarithm of base 4 and an exponent with a base of 4 are inverses of each other. 
So what we can do is we can actually take this function. So we have log base 4 of 6x minus 23 is equal to 3. And what we can do is we can basically set each side to the power of 4. So if we do this, 4 to the power of log base 4, 6x minus 23, and then we do 4 to the power of 3. Then from here we note, okay, well if we have 4 to a power, the exponents need to be the same. So as we do this, what we can do is because 4 and log base 4 undo each other, we essentially can take 6x minus 23 and set it equal to 4 to the power of 3. And then from here, it's the same process. You have 6x minus 23 is equal to 64 plus 23 plus 23. So you have 6x is equal to 87 divided by 6. x is equal to 87 over 6. So we have two options here. One is you can use your logarithm to exponent trick, or you can essentially take the exponent of 4 of each side, and then these base 4s undo each other, so as a result, you are left with the x outside of the log, and you can actually solve. So let's give a couple of these problems a try. Remember, you can use either strategy. For this case, I'm going to use the one where we take the exponent of each side because that strategy is a little more new. But if you like the, to use the log to exponent conversion strategy, that is fine as well. So here what I'm going to do is because I want to undo this log of base 6, and the log of base 6 is by itself, I'm going to take 6 to the power of each side. So I have 6 to the power of log base 6, 4x minus 7, and 6 to the power of 3. In doing so, I essentially can undo that logarithm of base 6. So these undo each other. And we're left with 4x minus 7 is equal to 6 to the power of 3. Now, 6 to the power of 3 is 216. So we then are going to add 7 to each side. So I have 4x is equal to 223 divided by 4, and x is equal to 223 divided by 4. Now from here, if I look at this next problem, what I notice is that this logarithm isn't by itself. I can see it's a natural log, so it's logarithm of base e, but it's not alone. And in order to use this trick where we essentially undo the logarithm using an exponent, we really need to get the logarithm by itself. So I'm going to start by adding 5 to each side. So I have 2 natural log base e of 3x minus 5 is equal to 30. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I have natural log base e of 3x minus 5 is equal to 15. Now at this point, I can use an exponent to undo that logarithm. So I'm going to do e to the power of each side. So these undo each other. So I'm left with 3x minus 5 is equal to e to the power of 15. Now if I take e to the power of 15, that is a really large number. So that's approximately 3269017.37. We're then going to add 5 to that. So we have 3x is equal to 3269022.37. And then from here, to finish solving this, we're just going to divide by 3. So we end up with x is equal to approximately 1089674.12. So what you can see here is that we have found an x value for each one, and if you were to take these x values and plug them back into the original equation, you would end up with an equation that is true. Now the last thing we have to talk about here is what we do when there are multiple logarithms within a particular problem. So you can see here that we have two logarithms, both of base 3. And what's tricky here is we can't really take the logarithm of each side when there's logarithms with the same base and we're not going to be able to get them completely by themselves because there's other numbers outside of the problem. 
So when we have multiple logarithms, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to condense these down into one logarithm. So this is where our logarithm properties are really important. So when I look at this problem, what I notice is that I have a 2 out in front here. So that tells me that I'm going to need to add the 2 into the power of the x. So this is really log base 3 of 5 plus log base 3 of x squared. And then from here, this plus sign means that I have multiplication going on inside of the logarithm. So I'm going to do log base 3 of 5x squared is equal to 8. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to undo this logarithm by taking the power of 3 to each side. So we're going to take 3 to the power of log base 3, 5x squared, and we're going to take 3 to the power of 8. Doing so, these undo each other, so we're left with 5x squared is equal to 3 to the power of 8. So that's going to be a fairly large number here. So we have 3 to the power of 8, which leaves us with 5x squared is equal to 65, 61. We then divide both sides by 5, so we end up with x squared equals 1312.2. And then in order to find our value for x, to undo that squared, we need to square root both sides. So we end up with x equals 36.2. But then we also have to remember that this is an x squared, and there are two things that one squared produce 1,312.2 because it's an x squared here, so it gets squared before it would be square rooted. Um, so we would also have the negative version of that, which is negative 36.22. So typically when we have an x squared in our problem and we're trying to find the answers, we're typically going to have two answers that result unless we have one answer that's repeated. So we can see here we have now found our x value that if we were to take it and plug it back into this original equation, either x value that we pick would make the equation true. So let's try two more problems. First I notice that this next one, remember log with no base is really log base 10. It's just an implied 10 there. So we notice that we have a number of logs here and we need to solve this particular equation. We need to start by using our logarithm property. So I always start by pulling the powers back in. So I have log base 10 of 4 plus log base 10 of 3y minus log base 10 of 2 is equal to 3. Then from here, I'm going to condense my multiplication. So I have my numerator or my denominator of a fraction. So here we have log base 10 of 4 times 3y. And then the rest stays the same. Well, then from here, I can turn this into division because that subtraction means division. So I have logarithm of base 10 with we have 4 times 3y in our numerator and we have 2 in our denominator. Now I'm going to simplify this a smidge. So here I have log base 10. 4 times 3 is 12 over 2. So this is really log base 10 of 12 divided by 2 is 6. So it took a little bit because there were three logarithms there, but we were able to simplify it down to one single logarithm. Now that I have the single logarithm by itself, I can undo that logarithm by taking the exponent with a base of 10 to each side. So note that that base of 10 is going to undo that logarithm of base 10. So on this side, these cancel out and we're left with 6y is equal to 10 to the power of 3 which is 1,000. Then from here, we divide both sides by 6, which we can either leave as 
10,000 over 6, or divide both by 2, so that would be 500 over 3. And then you can write the decimal answer if you want, which is 166.67 repeating. But I'm going to leave it as a fraction because that is the most exact answer. So there's an example where we would have three logarithms. Now let's take a look at example 2. So example 2, we have two logarithms to start. And this has a plus sign in between, so I'm going to consolidate them into one single logarithm by using multiplication. Now because this one has x minus 5, I need to be extra careful and make sure that 2x multiplies by the x and the 5. So we have log base 2, and we essentially have 2x times x minus 5, all inside of it. Now what's really going on here when we have 2x times x minus 5 is we have the distributive property. We have 2x times x and 2x times negative 5. So what I have is log base 2 of 2x squared minus 10x on the inside of that logarithm is equal to 6. So that's my first step. I can consolidate my logarithm down. Now in order to undo this logarithm base 2, I have an exponent of base 2 that I can take of each side, and then these will undo each other. So an exponent of 2 to the power of log base 2, those undo each other, and we're left with 2x squared minus 10x is equal to 2 to the power of 6, which is 64. So now from here, I have a couple of different solving options. Um, I look at it and I notice there's an x squared in the problem, so that tells me that this is a quadratic. And typically when I have a quadratic, I think about the fact that I can do a couple of things. I can either use the square root strategy, but that only works when there are only two terms and there's only one x value, so that's not going to work. I can also check out and see if factoring works. And I can also check out and see if the quadratic formula works. I typically like to lean towards the quadratic formula just because it always works and it then saves me some time from finding out if factoring is not going to work. So if I'm going to solve this quadratic using the quadratic formula, I need to get all three terms together on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to start by subtracting 64. So here we have 2x squared minus 10x minus 64 is equal to 0. Then from here, we can identify our a, b, and c values. And then we can substitute them into our quadratic formula. So we have x equals negative b, so that's positive 10, plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 64, all over 2 times a, which is 2. So if we simplify the inside of that square root part there, so we have 10 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 64, we end up with x equals 10 plus or minus the square root of 612 divided by 4. So if we take the square root of 612, we find that we have 10 plus or minus 24.74 all divided by 4. So we can see we're going to have two values for x here for this particular equation. One of them is calculated by taking 10 plus 24.74 divided by 4. So 10 plus 24.74, that's 34.74, and we divide that by 4. So we get a value of 8.69 approximately. And then we do the same thing over here, 10 minus 24.74 divided by 4. So we get negative 14.74. And then we divide that by 4, so our other x value is going to be a negative 3.69. Now the last thing we do have to check with logarithms, because logarithms actually work similar to exponents. So something you need to know about logarithms 
is logarithms can only take in a positive value. So this is kind of like a like a square like a square root or a fourth root or something like that. So what we have to do is we have to check and make sure that both of these answers will actually work in our original equation. So we have 8.69 and negative 3.69. So if we jump back up here, I'm just going to refresh my memory on the original problems. We have log base 2 with a 2x on the inside, and then we have an x minus 5 on the inside. So if we jump back down here and kind of write that down quick. So we have log base 2 with a 2x on the inside, and then log base 2 with an x minus 5 on the inside. So I think that's my original equation. Yep. Okay. So if I take a look at this, I just need to make sure that if I put these values in for x, that the logarithm is going to have a positive value here on the inside. So here, 8.69 is positive, so that times 2 is going to be positive, and 8.69 is bigger than 5, so 8.69 minus 5 is just 3.69, so 8.69 is good and will be fine going into those logarithms. However, if I take a look at this negative 3.69, when I put it into this logarithm, it's going to be negative 6.69, and if I put it into this logarithm, negative 3... 0.69 minus 5 more is a negative 8.69. Because logarithms can only take in positive x values, we can't use this x minus or this negative 3.69 as an answer. So essentially what happens is we state that x is equal to 8.69, and we can say that we had negative 3.69 as an answer, but it is extraneous because of when we Square, squared and square rooted and all that good stuff, and we ended up with two answers. So with logarithms, just like with squared roots and fourth roots and all those even roots, you do have to check and make sure that the item going inside of it, the number going in, is always positive. So you do have to take a moment and double check to make sure that it will work.